Hello again and welcome to another SRPG Studio tutorial. Today's topic will be editing the enemy AI. Now, the basics of editing the AI are not difficult to grasp in my opinion. However, like many things in SRPG Studio, uh, the more you work with it, the more versatile the AI can be. There's a lot you can do with it that you wouldn't think at first glance. So, we'll start with the basics. To add an enemy unit to any map, you just double click on any space while in unit mode. And editing enemies is very similar to editing player units. However, instead of editing their growth rates, you can edit their AI patterns on the right here. So starting from the top, action pattern. This controls how the enemy moves and attacks. Approach just means that the enemy will move towards the nearest target every turn, attacking if possible. And if you check range only, then what that means is the enemy will only move at all if there is an enemy within the immediate movement and attack range. So if there is someone it can attack, like right that turn, it will do so, otherwise it will just sit and do nothing. If the enemy has the wait action pattern that it will sit completely still all the time, never moving, however it will attack enemy units that are within the range of its weapons, unless you check wait only, in which case the enemy will just sit there and do absolutely nothing forever. If you check move, then what you can do is set a goal point for the unit, meaning you can specify any tile on the map for it to move towards, or you can specify a unit, player, or another enemy on the map that it will move towards every turn. You can have the enemy only move towards the target, in which case it will stop if it is obstructed in any way. You can have it attack things nearby if the target tile is completely unreachable, and you can have it attack enemies, if possible, on its way towards the target, meaning that it will get distracted, if you will, by enemy units that it encounters along the way towards its target. You have other options that allow you to further customize the behavior of each enemy. This aim option allows you to select a unit that the enemy will either aim for exclusively, you can have it aim towards any unit, but it will prioritize attacking the unit that you check here. You can also set it so that the enemy does not attack units that you specify here, only going for units that aren't checked. And you can also have the enemy aim for units with certain properties, such as certain classes, what weapons they're holding, what items they're carrying, uh, what skills they have. You can do a lot with this. Uh, all of these are viable options, and that's a lot of options. You're even allowed to set which terrain tiles that the enemy is allowed to pass through or not pass through. You just uh, add each tile to this list here and then you set whether you want the enemy to be able to only pass through these or not pass through these at all. That's very interesting. I don't think I've ever done that. I don't see what you would use it for, but it's there. And you can also prevent the AI from doing certain actions. For example, you can prevent them from attacking with weapons. You can prevent them from attacking with items or using items rather. And you can prevent them from using command skills, which I think just means stealing and the unlock skill. If you have them set up as skills, then the enemy will not use them. If you have a door key or a chest key on an enemy, then you will have to prevent them from using items to stop them from using it. Now, each individual enemy can have multiple pages of AI data. So if you right click on the page one here, you can add a new page and then the new page can be whatever you want. And then you can set the conditions for which page that the AI uses. The AI will always use the highest number of page that it can. So if it meets the conditions for multiple pages, it will use the highest numbered page. And uh, the conditions can be anything that you would normally use for uh, setting up a condition for an event. So there's a lot here that you can use as well. It's important to note that if you uh, refer to the active unit in any way, that means you are referring to the unit that is right here, the one you are editing. So for example, I could make it so that the enemy will retreat if it uh, has low health. So I will uh, refer to the active unit and the parameter condition will be HP is less than whatever. Like it could be less than uh, 10, maybe it'll retreat at less than four health, etc., etc. You can do whatever you want here. Oh, and one other option you have is that if you check this bubble that says custom, you can put in a custom keyword. That is for scripts that alter the AI or add new possible AI behaviors. Uh, we're not gonna deal with any of that right now. Now, it can be annoying to have to set up the AI for every single individual enemy unit, so luckily they threw in a function that allows you to copy data from one unit to another. 
just uh, create the new unit and then go to the unit that you want to copy, hit copy data, and then click on the unit you are copying to. And then both units will have the same AI data. Just be careful not to overwrite any uh, data that you've already set up because I've done that a couple of times and it was annoying to have to set it up all over again. So I've gone over the basics of how to edit enemy AI and how to set up multiple AIs with conditions for which one the enemy uses. So uh, you might be wondering how to recreate some of the different enemy types that have come up in the various Fire Emblem games over the years. Such as, and I was wondering about this one at first until I learned, how do you create a brigand that attacks villages? Well, I'm going to show you how to set that up right now. First, we are going to create a unit and the AI for this unit is going to be, I'm just going to label it something different so I know which one it is. So the AI for this unit is going to be move and you are going to specify the tile that the village is on, which is going to be this red house right here at the entrance. And you can set attack when unreachable or attack when possible. I prefer attack when possible. And then you want to create a second page. The second page is going to be the AI that the enemy defaults to when the village has been destroyed. Because of course, if you just uh, leave it as is, then it's going to stay on that same tile for the entire battle. And uh, you probably don't want that. So now that the AI has been set up, we actually need to set up a condition for when the enemy should or should not approach this building. So we are going to create a local switch. Local switches are exclusive to the current chapter. Global switches stay for all chapters all the time. We're going to make this village burned. Now, if I were making a serious map, what I would do is also take this opportunity to set up my village event. So I'm going to set up a very basic village event. And the condition for this event is going to be the switch that we set has been turned off. And then somewhere in the event, you would want the switch to be turned on. And um, I'll just give a short sword if the player makes it in time. And now we go back to our bandit unit and um, we are going to make the condition for the second page. Village burned has been turned on. So if the player either visits the village or the enemy unit gets there first, then the switch is going to turn on and the uh, AI is going to default to its regular attack pattern instead of moving towards that building anymore. So uh, one thing that's missing, however, is that we need to set up the event for when the enemy reaches that tile. So what we're going to do is create an auto event. The events can be named anything you want, but here's what you need to do for the condition. It needs to be a unit and uh, you are going to have it so that when an enemy reaches th this position, the position of the village event, uh, the event is going to trigger. So filter, enemy, position condition, whatever tile you want it to be. And the other condition is that this switch is off because we don't want this event to go off if the switch is already on. All right, so in the event proper, you are going to first turn on the switch and we are going to use, I think it's under battle. Uh, yes, change map chip, because we are going to replace this nice basic house with a burned down house. How tragic. Let's see, it's right here. So we're going to use change map chip to change this built house into a burned one. And then you can play a sound effect or play a, a terrible little tune with a message that says the village was burned. But yeah, the bare minimum is to turn on the switch and then change the map tiles so that the player knows the village has been burned. So quick recap, the components of the brigand AI are the enemy unit is first programmed to move towards the building. And if the switch has been turned on, it will default back to just moving and attacking whatever it pleases. Our auto event is set up so that if an enemy reaches the building, and the switch is still off, then the uh, event will trigger, the switch will be turned on, the house will burn down, and then the enemy will go back to doing whatever it was doing. However, if the player reaches the house first, then the switch will turn on and the player will receive the item. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to change the map chip here. You also want to change the map chip to show that the building is uh, no longer visitable. 
So there we go. That's very easy to do too. So with all of that, let's see how it works. And there you go. He burned down the village. What a terrible person. And there you have it, the basics of editing enemy AI and how to create a brigand unit that destroys buildings. And for another example of what you can do with the AI in SRPG Studio, some of you out there might remember a little game called Thracia 776, which featured an AI so advanced that an enemy who had run out of weapons would rush to the nearest shop and buy some more. So let's go ahead and try that out. It's going to be very similar to what we just did with a brigand. However, we now need to make the condition that the unit has no weapons in their inventory. And to test it, we should probably not have any weapons in their inventory. So what the uh, unit is going to do here is that they are going to move towards the shop now. And for page two, instead of using a switch as a condition, they are instead going to have the condition be active unit has any one of these items in their inventory. You can just check any item that they are quote unquote supposed to have. Like you could just check all of them and then the game would search for any of these items in their inventory. And if they had one, then um, the, the condition would return true. So yes, if they have, if this unit has any of these items in its inventory, then it will move and approach normally. Otherwise it will move towards the shop and then we need to create another auto event. This one is going to be if the uh, if there is an enemy unit in the shop tile. So filter enemy position is going to be the blue building. Uh, that's what I count as a shop in my games. And they uh, need to not have any of these in their inventory. So, oh yes, and as for the event proper, we are going to create an event command increase item we are going to give the active unit a short sword and uh, there you go so the enemy with no item in their inventory should move towards the building and get an item from it so let's see if uh, the enemy does that he's moving up I'm going to move out of the way of these enemies He's getting there. And there you go, he got an item. So now he should be moving and attacking actively. Let's see if he does. And he's doing it! He did it! <laughs> well, that was unexpected. <laughs> Just give me a game over while I'm playtesting this, okay. So yes, there's definitely a lot more to this system that you can do than meets the eye. For instance, you could make an enemy unit that moves towards a specific player unit and auto-recruits themselves. If you wanted to do that, you would set the condition to be distance between two units. And uh, yeah, there's a lot you can do with this. You can uh, have the enemy aim for a throne tile if you are making a defense chapter. You can make it so that the enemy moves and attacks based on very arbitrary conditions. Uh, for example, when I first learned what you could do with this system, I made it so that the enemy would only move and attack if the player's gold was higher than a certain amount. Uh, down with all rich people. <laughs> and yeah, any one of these conditions is viable, so... Uh... So that might have been a shorter tutorial than normal, but uh, like with my other videos, my main goal here is to open your eyes to the possibilities because I really want to see some weird enemy AI movement patterns come out of this tutorial. So with that out of the way, I'm Ephraim225 and I will see you for whatever video I'm making next. Later!